Good morning, all you beautiful love streamers out there on Facebook, YouTube, and Zoom. Welcome to the Center for Spiritual Living Charlotte. If this is your first time, we are delighted to have you join us today. With modern technology, we are extremely grateful for this opportunity to touch so many lives, especially through Zoom and Facebook as we share all the wonderful happenings at CSL Charlotte. Feel free to visit our website, cslcharlotte.org, put in a prayer request, and subscribe. We add our recordings to our website each week, so let me tell you a little more about us. The Center for Spiritual Living Charlotte is a new thought community, living in ancient wisdom philosophy based on the science of mind. This science of mind philosophy was developed in the early 20th century by writer and lecturer, Dr. Ernest Holmes. He was a man on a mission. He studied truths from all of the world's religious traditions and spiritual paths and developed a new fresh way for us to look at ourselves and how we fit into our world. At CSL Charlotte, every philosophy is honored along with every race, sexual orientation and physical distinction. We are definitely a diverse, open and affirmative community. There are many paths to the divine. We can call it God, peace, love, spirit, infinite mind, the I am presence, the energetic force. It doesn't matter what you call it. That is your power, your personal relationship with the divine that resonates within you. You do not have to leave your philosophy or nature of knowledge can join us anytime. We recognize and refer to many holy scriptures, such as the Bible, the Quran, the Torah, Upanishads, Bhagavad Gita, just to name a few. So our vision statement is to continue a spiritual community, creating and preparing a succession of future leaders who can fully integrate, teach, and expose the science of mind principles, the messages, and the practices that strengthen the mind, body, and spirit of all individuals. One of our aims is to create a high collective consciousness for everyone in this community and beyond. We teach everyone the tools to do just that. So come and join us as we meet each Tuesday evening at 6 p.m. Eastern Standard Time. Welcome everyone. Enjoy our service today as we celebrate this powerful being which lives within each of us. So before I introduce Reverend Rosedale, our spiritual leader, I would like to enjoin you to leave behind any preconceived notions, any ideas of what is, any attachment to any words, thoughts, philosophies, and just take a moment to be open at the top. Ernest Holmes always wanted us to be open at the top to allow new thoughts in, to give us food for thought, for our own spiritual evolutionary process and development. Each of us is a unique and, ex and an amazing individual. So I ask you today to just show up and be, and each of us will hear what we need to hear because everyone is in a different place in their own spiritual evolution. So right now, I know that Reverend Rosedale is ready, prepared, and comes to up us with the divine. I know that she opens herself to spirit. And as she speaks, I know she speaks from the heart. So right now, I'd love to welcome you to take over Reverend Rosedale. Thank you, Dr. Wanda, for that fabulous opening, opening us all up, opening me up to say what I need to say and hear you hear what you need to hear and don't worry about it. Oh my God. To all our listeners, and all our fabulous virtual community everywhere, even YouTube and Facebook and wherever you are, know that you're welcome at CSL Charlotte. We are the Mind, Body, Spirit Center. And so, with that being said, the first thing we do at our spiritual community is we open up our celebration service with an affirmative prayer. 
And see, what's so beautiful about this whole thing is we got a person here. Well, see, since our talk today is about re redefining the mundane and the profane, we got a person here who she and I was talking about it all week. So first on our platform, you know, you're going to hear and be such, have such a treat from this sister, my sister. She is the one who's going to open us up today in our wonderful, beautiful ce celebration today. So Karen, just, Reverend Karen, just take it away, girl. Okay, and taking it away, and, and, oh, and I just know that in prayer, we identify the spirit, the creator of all life as so many wonderful, wonderful things. And that creator is also the redefining of the mundane and the profane for it is both. It is both and it is sacred and all words are sacred because all words are identifiers of life. And in, in this beautiful talk that we're about to be honored with from Reverend Rosedale this morning, she is redefining the mundane and the profane as sacred. And they are sacred. They are words that are sacred. They are actions that are sacred. And in that sacredness, we, our hearts live. Our hearts live in the sacred identity of spirit, the sacredness of spirit flowing through each and every one of us as unique and individual, as profane and as, as mundane, as sacred, for we are sacred. We are the children of God, and as that, we are all sacred. And I know that as Reverend Rosedale delivers her message this morning, each one of us takes to our heart what we need to hear individually and collectively as a whole, as the human race, and individually as ourselves, as God expresses through us as we are and who we are. And in knowing this and in this gratitude for this beautiful family here at CSL Charlotte, for my sister Rosedale, for every single person here, for, for my life, for all of our lives, we are the sacredness. We are the profane and we are the mundane. We are sacred expressions and creations of the one heart, the one mind, the one spirit of the universe, and that is God. And in releasing this prayer into the universal law, please join me, as I say, into God's heart. And so it is. And so it is, Reverend Karen. We are all of it, accept it or not. All righty. So next on our platform is our reader, Melissa Spiegler. Now, Melissa is a woman who's redefining the mundane and the profane for herself, too, because she's doing the reading. And, even, and you know, when she's doing the reading, she's going to know it for herself, whether she knows it or not. OK, I like that. But anyway, she's a woman. She's one of the people. Matter of fact, she's the second person. It's three of us who actually had the vision for CSL Charlotte way back before it was even uh, a blip on the radar. So now, with, with that being said, the mundane and the profane coming out of her is going to be very interesting. So I think you're going to be in for a treat. And if you're open to her reading, that's going to be a treat for sure. So with that being said, at the end of her reading, listen to the song called the In the Middle. Now, In the Middle, just listen to his words, but don't be so literal. Take these words as metaphorical. So what he says in the middle of the ride, think about us in the middle of the journey, okay? So that's where we're going with this. So with that, this is how we're going to demonstrate a little bit about the redefining the mundane and the profane. So Melissa, make it do what it do. Yes, my reading today is just that. It is about seeing the mundane and the profane as secret, as sacred, not secret, but sacred. The journey towards, oh, and by the way, this is by Reverend Rosedale Jones. The journey towards accepting the mundane and the profane as sacred is a personal and ongoing process. It involves reshaping deep-seated beliefs and societal conditioning. Basically, it means taking responsibility for redefining the mundane and the profane. 
to redefine the mundane and the profane and to cultivate a more positive and accepting mindset, it's important to incorporate spiritual practices and shift your mindset. It, to get started, begin practicing mindfulness meditation. It's a wonderful way to connect with your thoughts without judging them. The key is to embrace the present moment, including both ordinary or mundane thoughts, as well as any out there or profane thoughts that may arise. As spiritual beings having human experiences, we have both judgmental and non-judgmental thoughts. We tend to identify ourselves as good people when we have mundane thoughts, but fear sets in when our thoughts lean towards the profane. It's important to remember that these two sides coexist in our minds 24 hours a day, even during sleep. Next, consider a gratitude journal to help you focus on positive aspects of your life. By acknowledging the simple everyday things that are often considered mundane, you can shift your perspective and appreciate them more. Additionally, when you write in your journal, don't be afraid to include the profane or the not so positive aspects as well. This way, when you continuously read back in your thoughts, you start to shift your perspective and ultimately feel better. Self-awareness is the practice of observing your thoughts without attaching judgment. It's important to recognize societal conditioning that may lead to judgment and instead strive for the compassionate understanding. Remember, most judgments stem from religious ideas and conditioning, causing us to think in terms of good or bad. The judgment can make it difficult to be authentic as we can truly live, we cannot truly live any better than the next person. Seek, can't, seek support from like-minded individuals who are also exploring spiritual perspectives. Joining community that values diversity, acceptance, and growth provides encouragement on your spiritual journey. It's important to spend time with people who are mindful of their thoughts and choices and who are committed to living fulfilling lives. Research shows that emotions and attitudes are contagious. When you surround yourself with individuals who are mindful and dedicated to positive living, you can experience a transfer of positive emotions and perspectives. This phenomenon is known as emotional contagion. So consider taking the plunge into your next journey of accepting the mundane and the profane as sacred. It is a personal and ongoing process. You'll be so happy you did. Oh, and here's a quote. Both the mundane and the profane originate from the same source. And so it is. Be all right. Don't worry about what people say when you're gone or when you go away. Don't worry about what they tell themselves about you. You don't need to hear it. It's none of your business what somebody thinks about you. So whether you're mundane or profane, be sacred about it. Be good about it. And at this moment, I want you to take a deep breath and decide that no matter what action you take today, no matter whether it's a good judgment you have for you or a what you call not so good, but I'm going to call it to you. It's not profane. It's sacred if you choose to see it that way. So let's begin to take some time because all of us are in the middle. Wow, that is something else. So redefining the profane before I, I mean, redefine the mundane and the profane before I go, you got to hear what he said in that song. Did you hear what he said to us? He said, hey, it's only in your head what you're seeing when you walk in the front of that room. So if you walk in the room with a whole bunch of people and you're saying in your mind, I wonder if my thing is wrinkled. I wonder if this is going on. Uh, you know, don't do it. Just remember this, 
It is the conditioning, the product of your conditioning, that think everything that's not right about you is profane. Okay? Not. Just try your best, he said. No matter what you do, try your best and don't worry what they tell themselves about you when you're gone. It's all in your head. I just got to make sure we understand that because we don't. We got so much pressure onto ourselves about, am I doing this right? Do I look right? Am I uh, appropriate to walk into this beautiful formal place? They got uh, bl uh, black and white shirts. They're wearing, you know, this is the black and white event. Should I wear that dr uh, dress with that? Should I sit here? Should I pick up that fork a certain way? Those words, mundane and profane, tells the story right there. What you walked in there on your mind. It's all in your head. Whether you're right or wrong, good or bad, or indifferent. So good. Take a nice deep breath again and start to float back into the service as we just gave a minute to center, just to so, just so you know where you're going here today. I'm going to take a gratitude moment right now, and I'm going to thank you, Dr. Wanda, for starting us off with this one. I mean, you just jumped me way up from the cellular level, right, into my talk. And then also right behind that was you, Reverend Karen, when you brought on that prayer. Yeah. It's, this is the whole beauty of this whole thing. And then Melissa, thank you, my love, because seeing the mundane and the profane as sacred just points the way to redefining, redefining the profane and the mundane, right? So that's a good thing, you know? Now, think about this. Practicing the process we talked about that yesterday, the word process came up. But practicing the process of uh, redefining the, 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 <laughs> the mundane and the profane was actually like this. We want to redefine it to make sure that we can see it as sacred. Why? Because first of all, when you start seeing the things you do wrong, it, what does it do to your self-esteem? What does it do to your ego? What does it do? It badgers you. Everybody's got both sides of the coin. We are a coin. You got both sides. Accept them. Take them with you. Take it with you as sacred. This is me. Oh, this is me. Remember what I said? Remember I, I said this is you. This is me. See, because the mundane is basically how we describe what's ordinary. Not not ordinary as being that you're not good if you're not if you're ordinary because. Ordinary could be to you extraordinary. Ordinary could be, which ordinary to me is doing well. You know, I'm, I'm on top of my, my game if I'm ordinary because then I'm all right. But if I'm, I'm anything other than that, then things are going all over the place. But I can bring myself back in to a practice. Then with the profane, here's the deal with that. What happens is we stop doing the necessary things as profane and, and we start to think of words to be considered to be a curse, to be disrespectful, to be rude, to be anything dishonoring or sacrilegious. Ooh, what a word, right? But you know where this all stemmed from? It all stemmed from religion. And I'm telling you, I'm talking three Thousands of years ago, no, 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 I'm talking way before Jesus' days, around with Socrates, the questioner, the man who was always examining people, and they thought he was nuts. But anyway, long story short, just know this is not new, okay? If the problem is, when ever, ever since the, the start of the world, the people, the powers that be, as I call it, were always deciding who they would think they would have followed them or what they would do. And do you know that the game plan, the goal was always so that you can stay in your place, but you got to do it this way or you're not going to fit in here. So if you say, if you're staying in your place and you're thinking you're doing something that's great and they feel that what you're doing is wrong, you got so-and-so on your arm when you walk in this door, that they can see that as profane. You see it as profane because that's how they see it. 
Where does that sit you? Where does that sit you? That sits you in a place of, I'm uncomfortable here in this place today. It's only in your head. Oh, what you're trying to say, you know. So anyway, don't let people form opinions about you based on your mundane or profane activities, you know. Because you, you know what? Here's another thing. Profane is not a very negative anyway because it could be somebody else's curse. You don't have to have their curse to be living. You don't have to live by their curse. You know, you, could, you don't have to call your life their curse. Let them go ahead and have what they have to say about it and don't worry about it. Yesterday we talked about that in the, in the book study where we talked about how people put people in a high authority and, and, and look up to their opinion. And their opinion is important enough to, you know what, somebody had such a bad opinion of, of, of a doctor yesterday, two people there yesterday, had a, such a bad opinion of a doctor that it set them off for years. Words like a karma and um, uh, what was that word? Conviction. These are things that people call um, mon uh, profane. And, and then it was always done in the name of religion. Besides, you know what? It takes no time for somebody to judge you when they don't understand you because then they have to take the time out to ask you how what you mean by that and what you mean what you want to what you want to do, right? Oh uh, yeah. Who engages? People who engage in judgment are definitely people who find it so much easier. But you know what like Melissa's reading said, just because I don't agree with that, it does not make me any better. Right? Doesn't make you any better because I said the word S. You don't even know what I'm talking about. Safe. <laughs> well, anyway, I just had to get you on that one. But anyway, we hold people to such a high standard that you know what happens when we do that? It is something that we have to hold ourselves to because let me tell you something. If we continue to hold somebody else to, well, you have to do it right. And we got that, we aim in our eye at them. Wait, wait till you try to do that. Do you know what that does to you? Am I making sense? And I mean, is it really? Because that's just what research says. Research said, I was looking at the psychology, the science and psychology journal. And what it says that people who hold people to a high, a high standard ultimately end up judging themselves. Doesn't work. Don't say you shouldn't do that, or she's doing that, she's gay, she's straight, she's, she's a uh, transvestite, whatever. She, she's black, she's white, she's skinny, she's fat, whatever. Who are you? Who died and made you somebody that says what this person should be doing? So now this person's feeling like they're living a life of profanity because they don't fit in. Because that's all profane is meaning, that these people don't fit in. And who tells you that? Who tells you that? Society. The society, the societal approach have brought so many conditions onto people and put people in such a situation that, oh my God, you know, society's norms limits people from being who they are, limits people from being authentic. Society's norms puts people in a place where they're not even sure whether I should. Society's norm causes people to commit suicide because they don't feel good or they don't feel like they fit in. Here's the problem. What society does is they label certain aspects of profane and this leads to shame, to guilt, to uh, disconnection and not only just disconnection from the group, disconnection from yourself. And that's the most important relationship you have is the one with you. Try to keep up with society and oh my God, don't, years of conditioning has hindered people for so many years to be able to be authentic, to have authentic relationships. Why do you think so many families have so many problems today with getting along? Why do you think so many families have so many different things going on? Oh, she's uh, the black sheep. Why call them that? Well, that's what they called me and I'm all right, ain't I? <laughs> 
<laughs> well, I am, right? So with that being saying, with that being said, I know they they said a lot of things about me coming up because that's who I was. I lived out loud. And I I was, you know, at, okay, in my teens, I might not have been as ashamed of the things I did. But then for a minute there, I almost looked back and tried to be ashamed of some of the things I did as a child. I said, hold up. You, now, I'm saying this. Because <laughs> for a little while, I did go there thinking that, oh, my God. No, I said, hold up. You can't go back and kiss nobody in the past. You can't go back and shake the hands of somebody in the past. You can't go back and apologize to somebody in the past. So get moving. Move on. Look at it. To change the way you look at things, the things you look at change. Look at mundane and profane as both sacred. And then when you sit down for your spiritual practice, you get up sacred. So don't base your life on society's originating thoughts and what they meant when they started. Oh, well, you know, when this all started, well, we don't need to know that. Let's take it to the future. So... Why not change that perception of mundane and profane to sacred? Let's not call it that. Let's redefine it just like that. See how simple we can do that? You know how we can do it so it's even more simpler? It's spiritual practices. And one spiritual practice is imagination, visioning, okay? So imagine the freedom to be able to express yourself and, and not worry about what people are thinking because always I hear people over explaining themselves why they do it this way. Oh, you know why I didn't get that job? Because just, just stop! Sounds amazing, doesn't it? <laughs> the freedom part. No more hiding. No more pretending that I'm in with y'all. I'm like you guys. Be yourself. Authentic and as all get out. For me, what's amazing for me is I experience now because of me being that way, not concerned about my wrongness or whatever I used to do or whatever I did before, I am like this. I accept myself wholeheartedly. I accept the profanity parts of me. Yes, there were some. <laughs> according to you, maybe, but not according to me. Right? So you got to, it's only in your head. You got to make sure it's you who's understanding who you are. Not theirs, what they say when, you, when, you, when you're away. I love that song. In the middle. We're just in the middle of the journey. And right now, you're in the middle of the journey. As you hear this, now, to, now you're probably going to say, holy crap. So that means that, once, see, I didn't say a curse word, right? I could use nothing. No, I'm just kidding. I'm not trying to make that good. I'm not trying to make it bad either. <laughs> Sometimes I just laugh at life because it's so funny, man. The things that they do to put us through, the stuff they put us through to make us think who, who they want us to think. But let me just tell you this. There's some new research studies that show that hanging out with positive people, you heard the reading that Melissa read, but hanging out with positive people is so interesting. Because let me tell you something. If you hang, and positive is such a forget, I mean, not forgazy, but such a, yeah, whatever word. No, hang, hanging out with like people who you like, that like you, that get along well, and only looking out for each other's best. That's what I'm talking about. These are what the newest research studies show. They have done some studies and they've watched people. They put these certain control groups together to say, for this week, you're going to do X, Y, and Z. You're not going to socialize with anyone. You're going to do that. And let's see what happens, what goes through your mind all that whole entire week. And you go over here and just be a social butterfly. And you just be, you know what I'm talking about. These are things. Studies show that hanging out with meaningful people, people who mean something to you and you mean something to them, and when you talk, you can share. Like yesterday, we have at the book study, it was so phenomenal. This group has come together from California, from everywhere, and, and it turned out 
from a book study to a group, a discussion, a group discussion. And it's phenomenal. Oh my God, the insights that we, insights that we get from each other just to be satisfied in our own lives overall. Sometimes when we get that, where we have people who are kind to us and we are kind to, and we're happy and we can do things together, you are satisfied over, with your life overall. And you see, at CSL Charlotte, you have that opportunity. This is a group of probably many that to, to come together and be able to talk with people and share your feelings and share some of the things you share and give them insights into you. Wow. It becomes amazing after a while for you because you begin to see that, wow, I'm not all that bad. But now here. Being alone, this is why the group study was done. I mean, not the group study, the study group that, that not, you know, the, the group that they practiced to see the, this one group. They said, you stay home, you stay out of, the, out, out of the limelight, don't be socialized. Okay, let's say that particular group, they found themselves talking to their own selves in their own head where it didn't come out to be something so happy when at the end of the study. You see, so it just goes to show you that those people that said we're going to go socialize, we're going to go and we're going to eat. This is all we're going to talk about. We're going to talk about good things. We're not going to talk about politics. We're not going to talk about, you know, the things that turn us off. We're going to talk about good things that we can grow our lives with. That's what I'm all about. I don't want to talk to my friends that keep finding those values and taking me back to their life when they were so old, young rather, <laughs> and they were mistreated. I don't want to talk about that. I, I'll hear you, but doggone it, we ain't staying there. That's, a, that's some people I can have that conversation with, but guess what I do with them? I begin to pull away from them because the automatic thing that happens when I'm engaging in conversation with people who keep bringing up their past is I go into mine. Now, how do I get to finish my audiobook, audio book? How do I get to write my next book with all that stuff weighing down on my mind? You, I have to pull back from people like that. So therefore, I have to, what did I say earlier? Watch your crowd. Sometimes we just underestimate that. You know, it's just the way it is. Now on another, on another note, consider how for so many years we have been conditioned uh, for we, the condition that we've had with the prejudice, with the judgmental hatred, with the separation and all of those things. Let's think about how they got to spread that worldwide. <clears throat> First of all, it's been going on for many years. They taught people exactly how they want you to treat people. They taught the people, you know, all those people, I hate to say it, but the politicians and, and the people like that, they're trained to tell you so that you can come to them for what you need. Oh, I know you're looking at me like you're crazy, like I'm crazy. Now listen to this. Do you remember, I remember, maybe some of you don't, TVs were not allowed. Well, not, not, not that weren't allowed. They were so expensive that everybody could not get one. But you know what? The, the powers that be needed to get their dirt out to the world. So in order to do the world a favor, which they say they did, did a favor, they let the prices drop down, right? And because the prices dropped down, uh, people weren't able to do it. They go, oh, isn't the president so nice? Isn't that, oh wait, how about this? Uh, everybody thought it was so great. How about when um, uh, the, they, 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 they freed the slaves and they thought, oh, they, te they teach Abraham Lincoln freed the slaves. And now everybody was thinking he was such a hero. But you know what? They needed that. That was for them. That was capital gain. <laughs> I mean, just think about it, guys. Okay, so this is what I'm going to tell you about the TV. It, it, it did a lot of stuff. It brought media so big. That's a big conditioning. Because you know what? I'm going to use a good example. And that was 9-11. I was still living in New York at that time at, of the 9-11 incident. And um, my kids were in school at that time. They were little. And the 
I couldn't believe it. I mean, people kept saying, oh, you know, the World Trade Center, we would be there every other week doing stuff, I'm going to the roof to eat dinner and all these kind of things we should do. But anyway, the 9-11 thing, I want to just bring this point to you, and I want to see if you get it. Everybody in New York at that time where I was was saying, I'm waiting to see the president when he get online. When the, before the president get, I'm gonna be done with this in a minute. But before the, and far from what we saw in my community, because we we were scared to, to uh, for our kids and they wouldn't let us come get them and all this kind of stuff. So we're just going blah blah blah. Do you know every few minutes they kept replaying that bomb going through the building? Pow, 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 and we replayed it over and over because my girlfriend's son worked in that building. He's he he didn't come home that day. Okay. That's how close it was for us. But you know what they did by showing us that over and over and over? It showed us how uh, helpless we are as a people. And, and it was meant to do that because watch what happens. As soon as the president got found wherever he was, you know he wasn't no far, no far away. As soon as the president came, he told everybody, oh, we're going to do this. Shit. We're going to do this. Now check it out what happens after that. Every time you got on the airplane and you saw a person from that country, people were looking like, oh, us and them. Okay. A, a, new, a new black folk. <laughs> but anyway, let me get done. So anyway, guys, let me just tell you, how do we get rid of media real quickly? Stop talking about that stuff. Stop hanging out with those people that's talking about that. Hang out with people that's talking about something that's going to work for you. The media is not going to do, it doesn't work for you. <laughs> okay? It doesn't work. So let's start to get clear that the media was not designed and the TV is not designed for our betterment. These groups that we talk to people and we're around in the midst of each other, that's what's positive that's what serves us in a positive way so i'm so done with that so anyway now that i'm done we're going to get into the song now with this next song i want you to think we have uh you remember i said this is me right i just want you to know that this is me is the name of that next song and so as we think about this is me Watch and listen to her words. Her words are something, man. She's saying something about who she is and who she's not going to let them make her think she is. So don't look at it as, oh my God, anything. Not, remember, not literal, metaphorical. And let's listen to This Is Me. For who I am. This is me. Oh, okay. That's it. That's enough, Rosedale. Karen needs to leave. Okay, so that. <laughs> so guys, just find the strength in that song to this this week, and take it with you next week, so you can understand whoever you are is who you are. This is me. Hey, thank you, Timmy P, for those fabulous, fabulous, fabulous announcements. As always, so informative. Hey, you know what, guys? I usually like to say about birthdays, but we're not going to talk about that. You know, you you know your birthday. Give it to us, okay? But here's what I'd like to do. I like to do my big shout out, and then we're gonna end this thing. Let Reverend Karen pray us on out. So here's the big shout out. This morning on our platform, we had. The, our MC was Dr. Wanda. Thank you. Hoo -hoo. And then our opening and closing prayer was Reverend Karen. Hoo -hoo. All these credits going up. You see the credits going up? Just, just imagine. Okay. And reading and the greeter. Oh, my God. And the spotlighter, Melissa. <laughs> Thank you to my right hand man over here. And who's hiding in the background there who you think ain't there is Timmy P, the pilot. Always there. <laughs> And then we got our, our main man, Horace the Bush, who's always making sure that this thing is running so smooth. My platform is rocking, and I'm telling you, I love you all. But there's one more person who cleans stuff up. Yeah. You know what I was going to say? The profane. No, <laughs> she, she's the cleanup woman. Groovy G. <laughs> she made 
I'm sure that everything is nice and running and smooth in this joint. So I can really dig it. So, oh, guys, so that's what's happening. That's what's up. And, you know, I did say something about you, right, Big mm -hmm. A? Yes, yes. All right, so I'm a man, man here. So that's all good, man. And the music and announcements was, as you know, yours truly, Tim A.P., the pilot. Okay, so thank you guys for see sending out all your things. Uh, before we close out, we are going to have uh, a song. Reverend Karen uh, is going to pray us out as we move on to let her move into her next service. Okay, everybody, let's hear her out. Oh, having our name in lights. Thank you, producer, executive director, Reverend Rosedale. And yes, we are amazing. We are absolutely amazing because we are the creations of spirit, the creations of the one heart, one mind, one spirit, God, the universal creativity of power and light and love and kindness and just knowing this and opening up to feeling that presence within myself and knowing that presence within each and every life form upon this planet within this planet flying around this planet in the oceans the rivers wherever the mountains knowing that it is all god all life is of god from god and it expresses through us as us uniquely individually and with love and light and as we walk upon our journeys upon this earth bringing that knowledge bringing ourselves our hearts our open love to our world as we travel in our own world, knowing that the ripple effect is wonderful. That is the amazing part of being human, the amazing part of being life, the amazing part of being a creation of the most high. That is who we are. And this beautiful message that we heard today from Reverend Rosedale just sung to my heart. And I know it's sung to each and everybody's heart here who listen to it live and will be listening to it later on because it's a beautiful message. It's a true message and it is an authentic message about the sacredness of all life, the sacredness of the profane and the mundane, how sacred life is. We are sacred and we are blessed and we bring our light out into this world. So in this attitude of gratitude in this Thanksgiving for CSL Charlotte for all the beautiful people here who are my brothers and sisters and I am so blessed to have have God had me come in together in this creation of love and light and kindness and I release this prayer for all of us as we take our awesome beautiful powerful selves out into this world and live a life of kind compassionate giving and receiving and knowing this Join me as we as I release this prayer into the universal law, the heart of God. And together we say, and so it is. And so it is. Thank you, Reverend Karen. Enjoy your next phase of the day. Because I got one coming right after this myself. So, and uh, we're just going to keep it moving today. So, that all said, I want to just say to everybody, we got a, a holiday season coming up. And... Just don't forget when we close out one year to another year, come back when you come on that, that 31st and you come and be part of that, make sure you're coming to say, I had so many this in this year, good things, whatever you want to call it, the mundane, the profane, like Timmy P said. And I also want to bring in 2024 like this. And I want to see this happen. When you think about it between now and the end of the month, and when we get together on that, you probably will come up with some ideas that you would like to see yourself have. And then you send me the email, and this is what we do every year at the end of each one of those. You send all the things you're accepting for your new year. You burn the stuff in the beginning, figuratively, and then we go on and we decide what we will be accepting in 2024. And we would like for you, Dr. Wanda, to put that into the email at the end, even though you will not be here. So this way, everybody in our platforms get to put in theirs, okay? So we have got that all together. So that said, everybody, I wanna say, have a great rest of your week.